now? Sorry. You want me to be doing it now? So when it came time for me to make a new record, I knew I wanted to make a, a, a solo instrumental record with something added. And D. James, he was the first person I thought of going to and asking. And he said yes. I said yes. We are in uh, Woodstock, New York. And this is the Isacon, uh, D. James's studio behind us, where I've made my new record. You know, really what I was looking for was someone that had a real ear for all the things that I didn't know how to make and all the sounds that I didn't know how to produce and um, couldn't even really dream up. And that's really been the case that, um, you know, I've sort of played guitar to the best of my ability and then his creativity with just the sound production just far exceeded anything I could have ever dreamt of. So it's, um, it's very exciting. the drums are you liking any of that <laughs> a lot of it's been pretty interactive really I, you know there's times where I'll respond to something that Khaki's played or a sound that she's made Khaki responds in a way and then it'll take it somewhere else you know I'll just move all around it. and there were times where we would set up a, a cool sound and I would just sort of let Khaki go and do her thing and we'd end up with five minutes of beautiful noise you know yeah. There is a you know foot box that I was using just to, as a bass drum sound, and I wrote a small piece of music, and um, so it, it had this backbeat, this sort of just this this tiny little almost like a pillowy sound, and a guitar part, and that's really all it was. And from that, you know, it, it sort of inspired. What did, I mean, where did we go with it? We had done like maybe one or two takes, and they were good, and and then we worked out a tempo thing, and and as luck would have it, just as we were starting to to really dig into it, the rain just started just, I mean, it was like literally a downpour here for a good 20 minutes. And within that 20 minutes, we got this take of the song that needed nothing else except for what it was. I mean, that song sort of encapsulates the whole making of the record, I think, for me. While the planning was going on to record this new album, I had connected with a string quartet in New York called Ethel. I wrote two pieces of music specifically in mind for a string quartet to be played with them, although I didn't have an idea of, of specifically what that would sound like. So one of them I wrote on, a, on my tiny 12-string guitar, and another one was this, you know, in the classical world where there's um, pieces with that, that have multiple movements, it was inspired by that much longer, broader piece on a larger guitar. And then I really handed it over and they were able to kind of play back to me and they were really thrilled to do it. And that was really inc an incredible joy to work with them and nothing that I could have ever dreamt of it sounded as good as the stuff they did. When I first started playing fingerstyle guitar, a lot of the tunes I learned were, were Celtic tunes. I had an affinity for Celtic music for a long time and, you know, every time I played it live it just, it grabbed people like nothing else. We thought, well, let's get some bagpipes on this. We went down this wormhole of <laughs> trying to find a bagpipe player. <laughs> Say hey, Richmond. Hey. <laughs> we found Richmond. Richmond. Who is a local. So he brought this Scottish small pipe. So that was this really cool thing for me. You know, that's just that's one instrument you never think you're going to really get to work with. Yeah. And then he's got the right song turns up and you do. They're all written as just guitar songs, and none of them were written with the mind of, of having anything added. It's been actually a joy to play guitar songs and then lay things over them, underneath them, that actually don't interfere. We had some percussion, we had, we had some toms that were recorded, and I brought my shaker collection, which no one knows that I'm a you know, master shaker player. Can you hear from there something? Shakers have become this thing that I get to collect because they're tiny. In and seriousness, the record wouldn't sound how it does without those shakers. <laughs> a lot of shakers were played. Tiny baby mic. And, you know, I've played steel guitars and, and slide guitars for a long time, and so it's always nice to, to get that in. There's an instrument called a harpeggi, which is great because you can get any... It's almost like a keyboard 
it's a guitar setup that looks like a. Well, actually, it's a keyboard setup that looks like a guitar. Like well, I'm not quite of. sure. But well, you can get any. You, instead of the guitar, you're sort of limited to the, the specific notes that you can get in the frets. You can get any note that you want, and you just press it. With, with feedback, it just goes. Ree! And so we got some of that, and that was fabulous. Yeah. The original eight songs that form the core of the record were recorded out in Malibu. So it's been this kind of, you know, like I had the, the Malibu and the mansion by the sea and that whole thing. And then, you know, we had the sort of, you know, Brooklyn recording studio. Let's get this done. And it's fun and exciting. And, you know, and then this sort of peaceful beauty of Woodstock. So sort of in and out of everything to come back to. Yeah. And it's been really, it's been wonderful to the extent that this record is very, parts of it are emotionally very dark, you know? It's, it's, it's actually been really strange because um, I've had very emotionally dark times in my life, but not now. And, I've, and I, I didn't know what kind of album would come out of this period of my life, and it's been this sort of introspective, dark, creative, strange little record that's very curious sounding, and I'm kind of like, yeah, it's great, sounds wonderful. <laughs> When's lunch?